Today's card watch video has cards that are under $10. Many are on the reserve list and some that are not on the reserve list. But the good news is all these cards do have value. So you guys are back for your daily dose of magic conversation. This is Card Watch with MTG Moxman. Thanks again everyone for hanging out with me on my channel today. If you like this video, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow and I appreciate each and every subscriber to the channel for their daily content updates. All right guys, Card Watch. We are taking a look today at $10 and under cards. Some of these guys are reserve list, a few of them are not reserve list. When you look at the cards that are not on the reserve list, it really shouldn't be a surprise. There are so many cards printed by Wizards of the Coast that unless it's an obvious brew option and it's in a commander deck, a lot of these cards get forgotten and swept under the rug, but that doesn't mean that they're worthless and it doesn't mean they don't have value. Keep that stuff in mind. Sometimes they just don't get printed for a long time because they were in a set that nobody liked, it was unpopular. They kind of get forgotten about and then they slowly tick up in price, which is why it's a card you should be watching. When it comes to reserve list cards, all these cards are lower end reserve list cards, but they haven't always been low end. Some of these cards have had much higher price tags, but due to current market conditions, you'll find a lot of these cards as a sale price, which is why you should be watching them. And if you don't have any of these cards and you decide to buy some, good for you. And that's why I tell you that they are cards you should be watching. So let's take a look at some amazing magic cards and let me know what you think in the comment section, guys. Let's get started. So our first card I wanna share with you is Orm's Chant. Plain shift, okay guys? And I know the price tag looks weird. I told you under $10 and here it is being over that. But this card has only been reprinted one time and that was as a list card. The list card, it's under 10 bucks. You can find it on TCG Player for $9.90, I believe, for near mint from the list. The reason I'm showing you the plain shift version is because of the foil. Old school foils from this era do command a high price. And if you're a flashy shopper and you're looking for a big end item and you might want to go for a foil like this because they're so hard to find in the old boxes like that, I just want to show off the value of what this card is. Now, a lot of people will mix Orm's Champ with Isochron Scepter because that way your creatures, you know, they, the opponent can never attack you and they can never cast spells again as long as you pay the kicker each turn. It's a game ending combo. It can be used in Commander. Keep that stuff in mind, guys. If you're looking for a nice little combo, a little two card combo to have some fun with, it's just an underrated card in my opinion. It has a lot of versatility and playability to it and a lot of people don't expect it anymore. So when you see old cards like this, you, you sometimes just have to mention them because it's a card you should be watching for under 10 bucks. It's, it's an amazing deal. All right, let's check out our next card. Our next card is Imrith, and that is the Desert Doom from Adventures in Forgotten Realms. This was not a really well-received set. A lot of the cards were considered underpowered. I remember this card coming in at pre-release being $40. And yes, the mighty have fallen, but the chance of this card getting a reprint anytime soon, being a particular card from a particular world, very unlikely unless it comes back as a list card or some kind of specialty set as a reprint later on. But since the set has no value right now, this is less likely to end up there. When you take a look at a card that's under a dollar, and it's a five casting cost, five, five, two blue, three generic. This is used in Dragon Commander decks. When you take a look, it comes into play and it will be untapped, of course, and it has Ward four because it's untapped. And it says, whenever Imrith deals damage to a player, draw a card. Then if you have fewer than three cards in your hand, draw cards equal to the difference. It is nice to have a lot of card draw and this card is underrated for its power level. A lot of people don't give any of these dragons any kind of wherewithal. They go, who cares? This is a pretty powerful card in its own right and it's under a dollar. The idea of just holding on to four of these, like I said with Hall of the Storm Giants, Buying four for a couple of bucks and holding on for $4, you're saying this isn't worth it, or buying the foils or full art version for a couple of bucks more. If you want to go all out, the Amper Stamp version with the Dungeons & Dragons symbol on it, those are really hard to come across. They're like 50, 60 bucks, yes, but still super rare, very tweaky value card that will have its niche market later on if you're that type of collector investor. I'm just saying for under a buck, you can't go wrong with a card like this. All right, let's check out our next card. Now we're stepping into reserve list cards. Here we have Retribution of the Meek from Visions. This card has been as high as 
the market price right now for a near mint copy is $8.84. That's ridiculously low for what this card can do, which is why you should be watching it. For anyone on my channel, if you don't own this card, I do suggest getting at least one copy. Retribution of the Meek. Unlike a lot of the board wiping spells nowadays, it requires one white and two generic. Bury all creatures with power four or greater. Yes, it is limited in which types of creatures it removes, but if you base your build around lower powered creatures, your creatures will stay on the battlefield while theirs get wiped out. Your opponent may have to spend tons of mana base resource to have board wipes. You're barely spending anything. One white, two other. Give me a board wipe that can get rid of creatures that easily. It's insane to think this card is not $100 right now, but it's not. It's at the bargain basement price of $8.84, and that means it is accessible and attainable to any player coming into Magic the Gathering. Anybody playing with some white commander should have this card in it. You should have it, because it can deal with problems much easier than spells later on that cost so much more mana to do the same effect or worse. So for that reason, it's a card you should be watching. I just, I can't believe it's this cheap. Here we have Willow Priestess from Homelands. Now this card has been as high as 20 something dollars, 21, 22 bucks. And it's from a set that everyone hated. Everyone thought it was underpowered and weak. But the reason Willow Priestess should be a card you're watching and you should be paying attention to it. At $4.84 for this particular card. And the fact we've just seen in March the Machines, a whole bunch of new fairies entering like Fairy Mastermind. More strong blue fairies, of course. And we're going back to the wilds of Eldraine. So we are going to see more fairies. With the latest cards they've given us in March of the Machines with these combo characters that are more than one classification, right? We have like a, a dragon demon combo creature that's also a warrior. We don't know what they're going to give us later on. You don't know what's coming down the line. Just like a card like this can be valueless because it never got anything to go along with it to make it decent. We are now seeing cards printed that will make this card more valuable later on. Even from the perspective of what the card does. Two green, two other. It's a 2-2 two -two, which is meaningless for what you need it to do. Take a fairy from your hand and put it directly into play as though it were just summoned, just by tapping her. So if there's a fairy later on that's a 9-9 nine, nine, giant 2020 first strike, haste, whatever, you could just bring her out, tap it, comes directly into play. Think about that power level. This is like another, another version of cards like Didgeridoo. You just shouldn't be ignoring it. It also has a secondary power though. One green, two other. Target green creature gains protection from black until end of turn. So this card is one of the earlier forms of multiple abilities. Yes, one doesn't cost mana and one does, but when you need to protect your creature and you're in a commander game, you built a fairy tribal, a card like this could be a key pillar stone you want to own, even as a janky kind of add-in or as more power powerful fairies come along, it's a card you auto include. And it's only four bucks five bucks for a near mint you can find moderately played ones for two dollars on tcg player and of course you would use my affiliate link found in the description of my video that's right just hit that link on my video title page and it'll take you right there for your shopping experience i gotta show for myself you gotta find a way of making money all the time great card very underrated for what we've seen coming up from wizards of the coast so pay attention to it it's a card you should be watching our next card is also a fairy and it's from Homelands and that's Fairy Noble. Now the market price has this card at a buck fifty. This card's been over twelve dollars before. You can find this card for seventy five cents moderately played on a place like TCG Player or probably even your local store. Now what does the Fairy Noble do? Why should you even consider this as a card to watch? It's only one green and two generic. It can be splashed into a green blue fairy deck with little trouble. It is a flying creature. It's 1-2 power level is very mediocre even for back in the day, but it's what it does for your other creatures. As a passive ability, all fairies you control get plus zero plus one. So they get a little bit tougher, a little bit harder to kill. Nice. You can also tap the fairy noble and all fairies you control get plus one plus zero until end of turn. This is one of those cards that back in the day we didn't use it because we didn't use fairy decks. There weren't enough fairies to draw upon. But again, with tribals becoming bigger and wizards pushing things like knights, and, and of course we're seeing a push of soldiers, this is something to pay attention to. These are why we watch cards like this. I can't state it enough. Four of them is going to cost you $3. For four. 
even if you do nothing but sit on that card in a binder or put one into a fairy deck you're building later on, as things like Wilds of Eldrain come out, it, it just seems like a really simple solution to a couple of dollars without any heavy investment for people. And if the card spikes later, you can flip that into profit for cards you really do want to get that are higher end, reserve list or non-reserve list. If you thought I was not going to include Conchorn, you don't know me very well. Yes, it's Fallen Empires. Yes, it's a hated set that nobody cares about. But this card has uses. It can allow decks that don't have a lot of drawing ability to have that extra little, little kick. And if it's a deck that does have drawing ability, you would still include a card like this because it lets you auto change your hand. Take a closer look at this card. Remember, this card is only $4.63 near mint. And yes, people on my channel have bought this card out. People have had good times buying it. They've hoarded hundreds of copies. I don't know if they're ever gonna be able to get value out of that in the long term, but it's still a card you probably at least need to own one of for a commander deck. Probably four is the safer bet. The Conchhorn is a two generic. It's one tap, sacrifice the Conchhorn. Draw two cards and put any one card from your hand back on top of your library. So it is a form of brainstorm. So in a blue deck, you can have a brainstorm plus this card. In a black deck, maybe you don't have a lot of card draw, but you include this. Or you've got a way in a white deck of recursioning and bringing back the Conchhorn over and over again. Put in the arc, give you an archeologist, have him go digging. Put his white sneakers on, get his little dusting thing and go get you some Conchhorns from the beach. You can bring cards like this back. You can do things with it. And the fact that old artifacts like this can go anywhere means they have value. And yeah, people on my channel have bought cards like this. I own probably about 20 of this card and I use it in about eight of my commander decks that I'm building because I just feel it adds that little bit of extra draw that I might need. I, I don't know guys, it's up to you, but it's a card I'm watching for that exact reason is that cards like this can go anywhere. And that's key when you're looking for future play value or future collectability of a card. And the last card I want to talk about today is going to be Triangle of War. I've mentioned this in a few other videos. I've mentioned on live streams. This card had a buyout, I guess, early 2022. It, it got bought out with like, like 700 copies got bought. And then there was a fun buyout even on my channel where we bought out a couple hundred copies. Triangle of War actually has some use. It's from Visions, and even right now, it's under $5. It doesn't cost you a lot of money to get this card. And when you take a look, you know, a closer look at the card, it's one generic to put this in a deck, so it doesn't cost a lot of mana to get it out. Two, sacrifice Triangle of War. Choose target creature you control and a target creature an opponent controls. Each creature deals an amount of damage equal to its power to the other. There are lots of ways of using this card in Commander as a political card, but also in single decks where you need to be able to deal direct damage to get a creature out of the way, to get it off the battlefield when your opponent does not want to engage that creature in a battle. And there are ways of bringing artifacts back. We know that, okay? Like there's so many ways now. Wizards has given us so many tools to make cards like this so much more playable. That's why it's a card you should be watching and paying attention to because it probably should be at least a $15, $20 card and it's not. This card's sitting here doing nothing. That little spike you see, by the way, in the bottom of the screen, that is definitely people on my channel from that last bio. And it's going to go back down. The card will not be held up by the, the audience of my channel having some fun buying a few copies. It does get restocked. This card is still out there. And every time I look at it, I say, I can't believe it's this cheap. And no, I don't own a lot of copies. I think I have maybe, what, 30? 30 copies of that card, maybe? Because there's some in the, in the patron box there for my patrons. But yes, cards like this are so accessible still on the low end of the reserve list that I'm willing to take a chance Enjoy my reserve list collection by spending 30 bucks and getting 30 copies. That's a pretty inexpensive purchase. For a person who just wants to buy four, even at $3 a piece, that's only $12. That's not a big investment of money or capital. That's like skipping a couple of Starbucks lattes one week and getting some reserve list cards you could keep forever, even if it's only one to throw into a commander deck or as some janky card you want to talk about with your friends and hash it out over a conversation. It's a lot of fun to think about cards like this. And that's the real difference with the value that Wizards of the Coast is giving us now with the newer cards that get pounded to the ground for value, but the reserve list, you know, they can't do anything about it. At least they're not gonna. They're just gonna sit there and look at it and hope it goes away. 
So thanks a lot for hanging out, guys. Thanks for being here on the channel with me today. Slam those comments down in the comments section. I look forward to it each and every day. And of course, we'll see you for another card watch video tomorrow. And this weekend, of course, we got the hot 10. Have a great day, everyone. These are the credits. These are the people who make it happen on this channel. These are the lords of the board, the gods of be all and all jube jube collecting nacho cheese loving Moxman fans. Patrons rock! I know, I know, there's no tricking you. You now know there's an after credit scene. You know there's a place to go where everybody knows your name. Or even Teddy Ruxpin can come hang out, push in the tape cassette, hang out with Raggedy Ann and Andy, and have a tea party with He-Man. Guys, this is it. When you look at the value of some of these cards, they are so ridiculously low. For some of the reserve list and these non-reserve list ones, I can't believe these are the prices. And they may never go up in value, but I don't care if they go up or down. They're cards I think people just need to pay attention to. And there's so many. I can't break this into one video each week. I'm going to have to do a second one the next day. And it'll probably be higher end cards on it. So keep that stuff in mind that the video after this one that I'll do will be a higher end card watch video. So just cards you've probably done very well on. So thanks a lot, guys, for hanging out. Thanks for being here at the end. I can't wait for the Hot 10 this weekend. It's going to be awesome. I I have a feeling. You got that feeling? That's Black Eyed Peas, right?